I forgot this bag of marbles for Mr. Zubel. Is the doorman here yet? <laughs> First a dog's in charge, then a monkey? Next it'll be an elephant. Sign here, please. <laughs> Weirdest day ever. George started delivering the bag right away. He was a great door monkey. <laughs> Things had to be going better for George. Oh, what a <laughs> Huntley Jr. was a fast eater. Good thing George got some leaves from the tree. But Huntley Jr. didn't like the tree leaves. He only liked the leaves from the flowers. Hundley understood. He only liked one kind of dog food. He and Hundley Jr. were exactly alike. And then, something strange happened. Hundley Jr. dangled down off a stick and stopped moving. Maybe Hundley Jr. needed more food. Hundley had to get more leaves from the flowers fast. When Hundley got to the lobby, he couldn't believe his eyes. Nothing was wrong. <laughs> George couldn't believe his eyes either. Hundley was dirty and smelled like trash. <gasps> Hundley needed that food, but George didn't want a dirty dog in his clean lobby. <laughs> It was Hundley versus Monkey Hundley. Who would win? Oh, my flowers. Ms. Klopotsnik, that's who. Aren't they? Oh, dear. There's milkweed in this bouquet. I'm allergic to milkweed. Well, at least the lobby smelled better now. When Hundley got back, Hundley Jr. was in a tiny sleeping bag. Where did he get that? Hundley would just wait until his friend woke up. He was sure it wouldn't be long. Ah! Oh. Okay, there's trash all over the floor, George is in the lobby, and you're watching a stick? I'm taking your temperature, Hundley. Days and days went by. But Hundley Jr. stayed wrapped up in the hard little bag. Hundley tried to get Hundley Jr. to come out and play. Nope. Hundley tried to get Hundley Jr. to come out and sing. Nope. Meanwhile, George kept watching the lobby in the mornings while the doorman was at his class. He did a good job. Most of the time. Two weeks later, the doorman was back to work in the morning. Bye, George. But Hundley Jr. was still sleeping. George knew how to wake him up. <laughs> it looked like their friend would sleep forever. But then, the sleeping bag opened. And out came a butterfly? Where did Huntley Jr. go? It was empty. But that must mean the butterfly was Huntley Jr. No wonder he'd been so sleepy. It took a lot of work to grow wings. Their little friend had grown up. Puppies turned into dogs, baby monkeys turned into bigger monkeys, and caterpillars turned into butterflies. Hundley was happy his friend was awake. But he was a little sad too, because Hundley Jr. didn't want to live inside anymore. It was a beautiful day. A perfect day for flying. They'd miss their friend, but he was ready to leave and go see the world. Thanks to them. 
Hundley was proud. He'd been a great caterpillar daddy. Hey, lobby monkey! But he'd also learned his job could be done by a monkey. Huntley still did it better, though. Oh, thank you, George. What are you looking at? Spider webs? <laughs> well, spiders spin those webs with special spider silk. They live there. Uh huh, and the webs catch their food. Ooh, ha, 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 ha. Hold it. Ooh. Spiders don't eat apples. They eat small insects and flies. <laughs> George didn't want to eat flies, but he likes spider webs so much Ooh. that he wondered why he couldn't make a monkey web which would catch monkey food. the dachshund test. But it did the opposite of catching fruit. Twine was strong, not rubbery, and it was all he had left. But would food stick to it? It would if you made it sticky. Stickier than honey. This would be the perfect test for his monkey web. Nice web, George. Playing spider? Uh -huh. yeah. All right, spider monkey. Here comes a big fly. Huh? Food didn't stick to the web. And the web couldn't stick to the wall because George was too heavy. Aww. You get those to the park. <laughs> wow, you even brought plenty of extra strong tape so it won't blow away. Thanks. You really saved the day. You want that? <laughs> sure, I have plenty. <laughs> Maybe George didn't have to give up on his monkey web yet. Here was a chance to see how an expert did it. George, let's get home before we get caught in the rain. Oh, hey, what's this? <laughs> well, that is a pretty good monkey web, George. <laughs> it... Can we help? Oh, yes, please. This is my grandfather's collection of antique postcards. They're priceless. <laughs> we'll never get them all. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, it's hopeless. The museum wanted to display them. Now they're going to be lost. <laughs> oh, my, what luck that this big, sticky uh, web thing was here. Oh, that wasn't luck. That was a monkey. <laughs> oh, Rain, I've got to recover that statue now. Oh, and I'd better get these to the museum fast. Thanks again.
<laughs> the spider webs had to be saved from the storm, too. Making webs was hard. George was impressed little spiders could do such amazing things. George got rid of the rainy day and gave him a sunny mountain view. George figured a smart monkey all by himself should be able to work this thing. Did Juicy J say he put in that drink? It's got five fruits and vegetables, plus a special secret ingredient. Five fruits and vegetables, and all of them seem to be red. Mm. Apples are red, and peppers, and strawberries, Ooh. and watermelons. didn't know what cabbage was, but it was the last red thing in the fridge. Five red things. Hmm. Now all George needed was a special ingredient. Ah. <laughs> hmm. A red fish? Ah. Why not? Okay, so maybe raw fish is not a special juice ingredient. George decided he'd try again and make a fish-free juice. He started with one of everything. One apple, one strawberry, That wasn't it at all. He had the red ingredients. Hmm. What could be the problem? Oh. George decided to experiment with different amounts of each ingredient. He used a big piece of paper to keep track. Too sweet. George added more peppers. It still wasn't right. And it certainly didn't pass the Hundley test. Maybe George needed more of these things. Close, but George thought more apples might help. George's juice was perfect. Well, almost. It still needed a special secret ingredient. Huh. Where could he find one of those? Ah! Hello, dear, dear. See, can I interest you in today's special? Special? That's exactly what he was looking for. It's eggplant piccata, with extra amounts of piccata. Mm, well, huh. Oh, those are radishes. Try one, try one. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, but careful. Radishes are a little eh, speziato. That means spicy. Radishes were spicy. But spicy might be good in a drink. <laughs> I know. Help yourself, Georgie. <laughs> 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 
just the radishes? <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. George hoped that one radish would do the trick. George had done it. His juice was just as good as Juicy J's. Better even. George! Oh no. Oh, have you been making juice? Oh, oh my goodness, this juice is amazing! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! George thought his juice was so delicious, he decided to give it away at the next farmer's market. Get your George juice. It's made with apples for strong bones, cabbage for vitamin C, and a bunch of other healthy stuff. <laughs> oh, thanks! Fantastic! Can I get the recipe? Sure. George started with your juice, but added a few new ingredients. <laughs> a radish? Oh, that is brilliant! A revolution in juice making! To George and his delicious George juice! <laughs> hey, George, would you like a subway map as a souvenir of your first ride? <laughs> Okay, wait here. I'll be right back. Uh -huh. George couldn't wait to get on the train, so he didn't. Oh, good, the train's here. Now where's George? George? Ah! Oh, ah! Wait, ah! Uh, here you go. George, I'm, I'm, I'm out. Uh -huh. Wait, my monkey's on the train. George, get off at the next station and wait for me there. <laughs> oh, hey there. I've never had a monkey on my train before. Would you like to see how I drive this thing? <laughs> oh, maybe you'd even like to help. <laughs> oh, Okay, the workers are done and the light's green, so it's time to get moving. So let's blow the horn. Ooh! <laughs> now move the lever forward, easy, and get this train a rolling. <laughs> Great job! You can drive my train anytime. Bye now! <laughs> Hey, it was George's friend, Marco. Mm. <laughs> Hola, George. Do you want to play with us? <laughs> <laughs> George! Excuse me, pardon me. Oh. <laughs> hey! George, I'll wait for you at the next stop, Petite Paris. Don't worry. George was confused. He heard the rumbling and the screeching. So where was the train? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Huh? George was confused. This looked like where he'd been before. And that was the same clown. Which meant... Uh -oh. George was back where he started. How did he do that? Why, hello there. I thought you were going to the zoo. Don't understand. Where's George? I told him to get on the next train. If George didn't get on the uptown train, then maybe could he have gotten on the downtown train by mistake? Because I never explained that there were two trains. That must be it. Oh, 
Hang tight, George. I'm coming. <laughs> what? George, hold on. Stay on the train and go to the zoo. <laughs> Due to mechanical difficulties, there will be a one hour delay on the uptown line. One hour? That's it. Subway's out. Running's in. See you, Reginald. Cheerio! George loved riding on the subway, but he also couldn't wait to see a dragon. Ah! Not only did George see a dragon on his way to the zoo, he also saw an Italian opera singer, some Russian dancers, and a Swiss yodel. George had arrived at the zoo. Oh no. <gasps> George! <gasps> you made it, George! All by yourself! And faster than I did. Now, let's hurry and get over to the zoo because I think they... Close at 4 p.m. Sorry. <laughs> oh, but it took us all day to get here, and, and we really wanted to see the Komodo dragon. Isn't there anything you can do? <laughs> well, nothing wrong with a monkey in a zoo, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so why did it take you all day to get here? It's a long story. Ah, well, little advice. Next time, take the subway. It's faster. <laughs> I can't even make my first delivery. How am I going to finish my whole route in time? Hey! If you're not delivering papers, want to pull me around in the snow? I've never used a toboggan before, but so far it's great. Hmm. Thanks for thinking of it, George. Ah. <laughs> Look. Good morning. Thanks, boys. Hang on, gotta steer around this curve. <laughs> much about toboggans. I'm not much on snow sports. I guess I spend too much time playing with my trains. Ooh. Maybe there's something else you could use in here instead. George! Then George realized you can steer by leaning. <laughs> <laughs> George, you're a genius. <laughs> Why didn't I think to lean? That's how we can steer the toboggan. Oh, you better keep the blanket. You might need it. They weren't going anywhere. They had run out of hill. And then George realized. Great idea, George. 
We can turn this blanket into a sail and we can zoom over the flats. If only he had a couple of poles. From the recycling bins, take anything you want. Thanks. Once their sail was sail shaped, they needed to attach it to the poles. Attaching it to the mast and boom was a breeze. With their sail in place, they'd soon be moving quickly. But their mast blew past. So George found a way to hold it fast. Ready? Let the boom out so the sail catches the wind. Only one more delivery, but we'll never make it all the way around the lake to Windmill Lane by 5 o'clock. Hmm. <gasps> ah! They didn't have to go around the lake. They could go across it. <laughs> Good idea, George. <laughs> Honors. Not bad for a city kid. <laughs> She's a real beaut. Couldn't have done it without you, partner. Day one of a new golden pouch delivery year starts today. Think we'll win again? Ah -ha! George was certain. Because when it came to paper delivery, it was always smooth sailing with Bill. How did bears do it? George had to find out. Just Teddy? A bear. Uh -huh. How do bears sleep? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do bears sleep in the woods? Uh -huh. Hibernation! Uh -huh. Well, to hibernate, first bears eat a lot, uh -huh. then go into their dark, quiet caves and they. Uh -huh. Now his room was exactly like a cave. <laughs> Except caves were quiet. <laughs> George didn't know whose dog this was, but he knew what stopped Charky from barking. Peanut butter. Well, no more peanut butter. How could he quiet the cows? He 
couldn't hold the blanket on his ears in his sleep, but maybe there was another way to use it to keep sounds out. George, I've got that tough part down. Ooh, cool muted sound. Finally, everything was perfect for monkey hibernation. When George woke up, it would be springtime. George woke up, he realized he'd done it. He had hibernated. Six months must have passed. His goldfish looked bigger. That meant outside, it was spring. Nothing was growing yet. It must have been early spring. Good morning, George. Well, that wasn't much of a welcome back after a whole hibernation. Well, I was thinking of making banana nut pancakes for breakfast, but you ate all the bananas yesterday. Yesterday? George only hibernated one night? Well, he'd just have to go back to bed and try harder. Oops. <laughs> well, it, it seemed like time to get the winter stuff out. Just happened a little faster than I intended. <laughs> Wait a minute. George forgot about the winter stuff. Skis. Sleds. His monkey mittens. No way did George want to sleep through winter and miss using all this fun stuff. Maybe someday, bears would wake up and see what they're missing. Get your free lemonade! Hey, George, you know why they call me the Lemonade King? Free samples. Once people try this stuff, they're hooked. They can't get enough. And they bring back their friends. Mmm, this is the best ever. I'll take two, please. Wow, sure. Oh. That gave George an idea. If people got free samples of the man's book, maybe they'd give some to their friends, too. That'd be a great way to spread the bird word. Ooh. <laughs> ah, the man's warbler book? <laughs> With each lemonade, you're going to give a free book? In business, we call that a two-for-one. Can't miss. <laughs> but not everyone who wanted lemonade wanted a book. Either it didn't fit on a bicycle, or it was too yellow. Uh. Or they didn't know how to read. Looks like you need to reach more people. You should advertise. Huh? Hey! <laughs> That's the idea. You just need to put the sign where a lot of people can see it. Huh. <laughs> Uh, George, 
George, how about you paint and I'll supervise from here, okay? Uh -huh. Don't forget the picture. When George got close to the billboard, he could see things he couldn't see from far away, like the fact that the billboard wasn't just one big sheet of paper, but six sheets glued together. Mm. <laughs> this time, George was sure he'd get it right. What? George, come down here quick! back in order. Uh, okay, that looks good. But how do we keep them in order when you're up there? <laughs> George remembered that numbers were a good way to keep track of things. Huh? Huh? You're huh? numbering them? Huh? Huh? Good idea. To keep everything straight, George numbered the rectangles on the billboard in the same order. George! Ugh, oh, boy. Talk about a slow news day. Hey, there's a monkey painting a billboard. I wish. There's a monkey painting the billboard! Pull over! Uh, are we rolling? This is a special report. Today, live. One monkey, one billboard. One story you'll never forget. Mr. Libro, won't you please reconsider? My book is very important. Yeah, but is it funny? Well, no. See, that's a problem, because I like funny. Hey, what's everybody staring at? Is that a monkey? What's he doing? Oh, no. I know that billboard. What? <laughs> Look at that! A monkey painting a goofy guy with a bird on his... Wait a minute. You're the guy! <laughs> yep. It's me and my monkey. Brilliant advertising campaign! If your book is half as brilliant as that billboard, then I'm sold! I've never seen anything like it. This book is selling like hotcakes. Well, George deserves the credit for that. <laughs> it made me laugh. It made me cry. It made me want to donate half the proceeds to the Warbler Foundation. And there you have it. One book, one monkey, one recipe for sales success. Reporting live from Lots of Libros. Don't forget, save the Warbler. And try Steve's lemonade. <laughs> hey, George. George! <laughs> How about taking a bath to wash all that mud off? George was puzzled. Did the bathtub run out of water? Hey, George, I'm not getting any water downstairs. How about you? <laughs> I'd better call Mr. Quint. <laughs> so, how's it look, Mr. Quint? Did our well run dry? Oh, no, no, no. Just a broken pump. You got plenty of water down there. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Now, this here is your house. That's the water. And to get to it, all you have to do is dig a well. Huh? Yep, a well. See, a well is just a hole in the ground that's deep enough to reach water. And a pump, like that one there, suctions the water up and out. Uh, sort of like the way you're using that straw. Every time you suck on it, you're pulling the orange juice up out of your glass. 
Well, your house won't be seeing water for a few more days, I'm afraid. I have to order you a new pump. A few days? Well, I guess that means we're going back to the city, George. Some of us still need a bath. <laughs> okay, go straight in and run a bath, George. <laughs> hey, George. <laughs> I have to go help Professor Wiseman. Don't forget about that bath. George decided that the best thing to do was to put all his toys in the tub. <laughs> Hello? Is anyone there? I just wanted to make sure you saw that orange fly eye slipped under your door. We have to shut off all the water at 4 o'clock, which is... now! I'm going in! To get to water, all you have to do is dig a well. <laughs> but Hundley had finally cleaned up George's mess. George remembered that a well didn't need to be wide, it just needed to be deep. George had water. What he didn't have was a way to get it out of the ground. George remembered that people used pipes to carry water from their wells. <sighs> so that's what George needed, a very long pipe. <laughs> Maybe this would work. Duct tape, anything was possible. Water was going up the straw. At this rate, George would have his bathtub filled in no time. Except the well was out of water. George had to dig a deeper hole. George had struck the mother load of water. Water spurting up 20 feet in the middle of the city? Not a good sign. See, the whole reason we turned the water off was to figure out why we were losing pressure. <sighs> Turns out the water main leading to the building had a crack in it. I still don't know how George discovered the water main or the crack, but it's a good thing you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, George, you haven't looked this clean in days. When you take a bath, you really take a bath. <laughs>